Good morning, all you beautiful people. It's another wonderful fall, sunshiny day, and we are in the holiday season. Thanksgiving was just a few days ago, and straight ahead is Christmas. And I'm making some of my candy. Today is a candy day for me. And the first candy I'm going to make this morning is date roll. So let's turn around here to the counter, and I want to show you what I'm doing. Now right here I have dates that I'm cutting up right here, and this is candied cherries. I'm cutting the candied cherries up, and this is part of the ingredients for the date roll. So I just wanted to show you how I do that. I've got one, one date here left. That's a whole date. Okay, and I'm just going to quarter it. Slice it lengthwise. Slice them again lengthwise. You've got four quarters. And then just put it together and cut it up into small little pieces. Okay, that's got my dates cut up. Now I have a pound of dates, 16 ounces. This is, this is a little candied cherry. I have 20 of these, and I'm quartering them up as well. Now, you can use maraschino cherries if you like maraschino cherries, but I don't like maraschino cherries, so I use candied cherries. Okay, here's my bowl. I've already got some dates in there. Let's scrape everything in here. Now, date roll, some of you may not be familiar with date roll. It's a, it's a very old candy. And it's not as popular or as well-known as Divinity or Fudge or Pralines, uh, but it's a candy that my Granny Cochran always made every year for Christmas. And I have her recipe, and that's what I'm going by today. So when I make date roll, it brings back memories of my Granny Cochran and her being in her kitchen cooking during the holidays. We would we would go down there and take Mile to their house on Christmas Day and we would walk in the uh, the kitchen. Granny would always be in the kitchen. I'm moving over here to the to the stove now. Granny would always be in the kitchen she would be cooking, making her dressing, and she would have, you know, the sides, yellow rice, and, and she would have a turkey, and, and giblet gravy, and what else, green beans maybe, rolls, and she would be getting, getting everything together. My Aunt Dixie, which is Granny's daughter, would be in there helping her. Aunt Dixie would always come in a few days early and help Granny with the with our Christmas dinner. Aunt Dixie just passed away, and we're fixing to have her funeral here in just a few days. And so, uh, she was she's the last one of Daddy's Daddy's siblings that was alive, and she passed down a lot of recipes to me uh, from Granny to Aunt Dixie to me. And now I'm passing them down to my daughter, Rebecca. So I cherish these recipes and these memories of family. Okay, let's get around here. I've got a big pot here. Now, what I'm actually doing today is I am making a double recipe, a double recipe of date roll. I don't want to, and this is a, this is a candy that you can double. Some candies you can't double. You have to make them just one batch at a time. But this one, you can double. Okay, so I have six cups of sugar in here, and I need two cups of evaporated milk. I've already got one cup in there. I'm fixing to open up another can of evaporated milk. I'm reaching right up here and getting something off of the top of my vent hood. Look at this. Who knows what this is? <laughs> this end is a bottle opener. It opens the old-fashioned drinks, bottle drinks, that had the metal lid on it, and you would pop that lid off. 
this opens up cans. This point here will puncture the can and poke a hole in the can. And that's what I'm going to use today. Now, this was my Granny Cochran's. And the reason that I have it sitting up here on my hood, and this is a little magnet that, uh, that makes it attached to the hood there if you have a metal hood. The reason I've got it up on my hood is because that's where Granny always kept it, in her, in her kitchen. So I have Granny's little gadget here on my hood, just like I always saw it in her kitchen on her hood. Okay, let's see if I can let you see me open this. Like I said, some people may have never seen one of these before, especially the younger generation, and don't even know how to use it or what it's for. I remember my daughter, when she saw it, she did not she didn't know what it was. Okay, let's see how it'll just punch a hole right in there. Turn around, let's punch a hole on the other side as well so that it'll have a little air and pour out easily. Okay, I've got to finish filling up this one cup measure here so that I can have my second cup of evaporated milk. Okay, there's our second cup of evaporated milk. Now, we've got one more ingredient we want to put in here, and then we're going to crank this up and let it start cooking. And that is Cairo syrup. And I want to tell you to use the Cairo brand. I have tried other brands, store brands, off brands, and they do not work as well. So be sure to use the Cairo brand so that you will have the best product possible. Okay, now I need four tablespoons of Cairo. And what I usually do is I just turn the the bottle over here and I just put four globs in there. I don't like having to try to use a measuring spoon and scrape it all out and all that kind of stuff so I just kind of glob some in there. So one, two, three, four. And that's good enough. Okay, we're going to stir it up. We're going to crank up this burner. We're going to be ready to go. I've got a really big pot here because I'm making a double recipe. And this, this candy will probably kind of boil up high in the pot while it's cooking. So that's the reason I've got such a big pot here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn my burner on. I'm going to turn it on just a little above medium. Just a tad, not much, above medium, because you have to be careful to not cook it too high, not to have your heat too high, and you have to be careful to keep it stirred or it's going to burn on bottom. Now, we're going to cook this mixture to the softball stage. I don't use a candy thermometer. I use just a bowl with cold water in it and drop some down in there and when it will form a soft ball, then it's ready. So let me get out a, a bowl. Here's a bowl. Let me get some water in it so this will be ready to go. You see these pretty blue dishes? These were my Granny Cochran's dishes as well and they were passed down to me. So I enjoy using them and cooking and eating off of them. All right, now I'm gonna let this start cooking. Let's go back over to the bar and we'll do a few things over here. We have to have everything prepped and ready to go because when you're dealing with candy, uh, timing is very important. You have to have everything in place because if you don't, if you if your candy's ready and it's time to put it out and on on your paper and everything, and you don't have you don't have all of your other ingredients, say you don't have your pecans ready to go. I've already got my pecans measured up. Where are my pecans at? Here they are. See, I've already got my pecans measured up. Four cups of pecans, and I've already got my paper laid out here. And you have to have everything in place and ready to go because when that candy starts hardening up, 
uh, you've got to get it out, get it rolled up, and if you don't, then you're going to have this big glob of candy just stuck in your pot, and it's going to be messed up, and the only thing you can do is scrape it out and throw it away, or, you know, you can eat it, but it's not going to be anything that you want to serve for the holidays. <laughs> so I have some, I have some pieces of freezer paper laid out here. I'm going to spray them with a little bit of Pam spray. And this is what I'm going to lay the candy out on. Now, Granny always used a, a flour sack towel to lay her candy out on. And I have done that before too, and that works really well. But I don't have a flour sack can, uh, towel this year, I don't have one. I've used I used my last one, I guess, last year, and I haven't bought any more. And I don't I don't I don't save them. I don't rewash them or anything like that because by the time I get through putting the candy in them and rolling them up and everything, they are so yucky until I just throw them away. And I just hadn't bought any more. But I have used freezer paper before. Freezer paper works well, so that'll be great. Now I'm just putting this Pam spray on here so that the candy won't stick so badly to the freezer paper when I pour it out on this freezer paper. Now if you don't have Pam spray, that's fine. You can use butter. You can use oil. You can use shortening and just, you know, grease your paper and that'll be fine. Okay, we're going to move back over to the stove. And we're going to look and see how this is going. And this pot is so high until I just now realized you cannot see in this pot. So I'm going to bring the camera over here where you can see what this mixture looks like in the beginning stages. Okay. This is what it looks like right now. Let me see if I can get this where you can see it. There you go. That's what it looks like right now. Okay, so this is going to take a little time, and I'll just be cooking it and stirring it, and then I'll get back on here with you when we get ready to test it. Okay, our candy mixture is boiling. Let me bring the camera over and let you see what it looks like. There it is boiling. So we're going to go ahead and test it. I know that it's not ready, but I just want to show you kind of the stages that it goes through. Scraping the sides. You want to keep the sides of your pot scraped down. Okay. There's my little bowl of water right there. I'll drop a few drops in there. We want to see if it will make a soft ball yet. Okay. Okay, it's not making a soft ball. Here it is. See, it's just, it won't hold together. It won't roll together and make a soft ball. But it tastes real good. <laughs> so we'll let it cook some more and we'll test it again. Okay, let's test it again. Okay, it's starting to hold together. There it is right there, it's starting to hold together. But I want it to be just a little more firm than that. I'm gonna cook it just a few more minutes. All right, we're gonna test it again.
There it is. Softball. Right there. See, I can roll it around in my fingers, with my fingers, but it easily smashes. This is our softball. So, our syrup's ready. Now, let me turn this heat off. Kind of move things around here. We need to put two tablespoons of butter in here. Real butter. Okay, got that in. We need to put in two tables or two teaspoons. Can you see me? Okay, can you see the pot? Two teaspoons of vanilla. So let's get that in there. Okay. Let's kind of get that stirred up. on this warm burner because I'm fixing to put the, the dried fruit in and we want that dried fruit to kind of you know melt a little bit that's what our mixture looks like right now if I can get this where you can see it that's what it looks like okay now let's put our fruit in there's our dates and our cherries. Now these dates, I didn't think to tell you earlier, but use, use the packages that are just strictly dates. You don't want them to have any sugar on them or anything. Look on the back for ingredients and it will just say dates. That's what you need to use. And we're going to just stir this and let this dried fruit just kind of melt a little bit and get stirred into the candy. And we're going to need our candy to begin cooling here in just a few minutes. And as it cools, it will thicken. And once it gets thick enough, I'll dip it out onto our freezer paper and we'll let it start hardening up, and then we'll shape it and roll it up into a roll. Okay, I'm just going to let this this fruit just kind of warm up a little bit for a few minutes. Okay, we're back over here at the bar. I'm going to add four cups of pecans. Throw these pecans in. You want to get your pecans all good and coated with the candy. It's starting to get hard. See if you can see it. There it is, starting to get hard. Let me set it back down so I can stir it some more. Okay, you get a spatula. Okay, I'm going to start dipping it out into our freezer paper. We start down here.
great. This is turning out perfectly. This is good. Okay, I'm going to move on down to this other piece of freezer paper. I don't know if you can see this one very good. It's hardening up. This is great. Looks like it's going to be perfect candy. And that is wonderful. That's what I'm looking for. I've got first cousins that are coming in this weekend for my Aunt Dixie's funeral. And I'm gonna take some, I'm gonna take some of this date roll to them. I don't know if they've had date roll since Granny died. I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna take some to them. Okay, that's pretty much got it, looks like. Okay, let's move this pot out of the way. All right, now, let me pull this piece of paper loose here. Try to get one that's closer where you can see better. I'll do this middle one. I'm just pulling it loose. I had it taped down and pulling it loose from the bar. We're going to want to roll this and shape this into a roll. Okay, let's see if it's hard enough to do it. <clears throat> yep. So you can just take the paper and start shaping it into a roll. So you're rolling it up. And let's unroll it and see what it looks like. Okay, here we go. It's looking good. You just want to shape it into a roll. And then you want to just roll it on up in the paper. And we're going to let it sit just like this and cool. Every, uh, say every five minutes or so, you want to come over here and just kind of reshape it as it cools because it'll get flat on the bottom side. So you can just kind of roll it and reshape it every, about every five minutes until it's nice and cool. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And then I'll get back with you once I've got this done. Our date roll has cooled down. And now we're ready for the final step, and that is to coat it with powdered sugar. So let's turn around here. Let me show you how to do that. I've already got two of them right here coated with the powdered sugar. The other one's back over here. I hope you can see it good enough. So I'm just going to put some powdered sugar and rub it on all sides of the date roll. Just kind of roll it in it, rub it on it. Until it's coated very nicely. I hope y'all will try this date roll. It's a very delicious candy. Brushing the excess off of it. All right, we've got this one. All right, it's got all of our date rolls. Now let me rinse my hands off. So I have made 
10 batches of candy today, <laughs> and I am worn out. You can look here on the bar and see all of the candy that I've made, plus candy down here that the camera's not picking up. But I've got my candy made, and I'll be able to box it up and send my candy out to my family and friends for Christmas. Okay, let me get a knife. I'm gonna cut a piece of that date wall so you can see what it looks like. All right, let me see if this little knife will cut it. Let's turn around here. Just cut off a little piece off the end of one of them. Okay, that's date roll. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Mm. This is what it tastes like. <laughs> It was very good. Okay, y'all. I am done for today. I'm bushed. I'm wore out. I'm going to get my night clothes on and I'm going to bed. <laughs>